Hi and welcome to yet another car file. Now this week we're looking for the most desirable and exclusive car on the market and so far well we've narrowed it down to three very different machines. Ladies and gentlemen let me introduce you to the Mercedes CL600, the BMW 760i and finally the Range Rover Vogue V8. And if that gets your arm twitching wanting to write that check well let me tell you that each of these cars is worth an excess of £60,000. Yeah, I thought that would make your arm droop all right. And if none of these get your hearts palpitating, well, don't worry, because as always, Brendan Coogan will be here with his unique alternative. Well, John, although the three cars you've got there are worth the best part of a quarter of a million pounds, I've got a car that's worth even more. This week's alternative is a seriously exclusive bit of machinery. Join me later to find out what it is. Well, Brendan, yet again, you come up with another little gem. Right, before we get down to the testing and the driving, which I can't wait to do, let's see what our three cars that are worth nearly a quarter of a million pounds have to offer. Mercedes have always had a reputation for producing sports cars that are not only elegant and stylish, but are also very expensive. With this latest CL600, that tradition continues, as not only is it very fast, zero to 60 comes in under just five seconds, but it's also very expensive. It will cost you over £90,000. Range Rover have always been considered the gentleman's 4x4. Sure, it was big, but it was still understated. With this latest generation, that trend continues, although it has been tweaked a little for the 21st century. And the old 7 Series was without doubt the choice of chief executives everywhere. But when this latest model was introduced, it left more than a few mouths and checkbooks on the floor. You know, if I had the guts of £100,000 to spend in a car, well then I would be one lucky son of a bloke. But let's just say we enter the world I spend most of my time in my head, where everything is fluffy and wonderful and happy, just like Little House on the Prairie. Now that's a place where I could afford a £100,000 car. But which one would I buy? Well, I would want a car that has guys running up to me to shake my hand in admiration, and has women falling at my feet. John! Sorry. And the car to do that, even in the real world, is this. The Mercedes CL600. I mean, just look at it. You know it means business the minute you see it. These oval, powerful, sexy headlights that are echoed all the way through the bonnet. And what a long bonnet it is, underneath which you will find the heart of this beast. A six litre twin turbo V12 that gives out 500 brake horsepower. You cannot but be impressed by that. As we move around the side, well, it's like a little journey of discovery. There are so many nice little touches. You've got this V12 badge, which isn't too big or too small. It's just the right size. These wing mirrors with the indicators on the backs of them, and they just seem to blend in with the whole lines of the car. There is no doubting that this is truly a beautiful machine. But I do have one gripe, and that's with the boot. It just seems too big and seems to take away from the overall profile of the car. Who said BMW were boring and sensible? Well, if you thought they were, you mustn't have seen the latest 7 Series, because boring it ain't. If anything, it's aggressive. Slanting straight topped headlamp covers are the first indication that this car means business. The use of sharp angles and straight lines at the rear, as well as the curious right angle that finishes off the boot, lets you know that this is a very sharp modern car. But for me, BMW have just tried too hard. It's a little too brash, this fin on the roof for example, which incidentally is for advanced blue chip technology, makes you think that what you are piloting is more akin to Jaws than Flipper. Where the 7 Series looks like an aquatic killer, the Range Rover will squash it in its own habitat. It's enormous. It's enormous. BMW, before offloading Land Rover to Ford, spent a lot of time and effort asking past and present Range Rover drivers how they would like a new car to be designed. What they have come up with shares no body panels with the previous incarnations, but is entirely new and is distinctively recognisable as the ultimate 4x4. It does sacrifice some traditional virtues though. The separate chassis is gone and the body shell strength is now from its monocoque construction, which Land Rover claim is 250% more rigid than before. So to the scores, and trailing behind in the look stakes is the Beamer. Yes, it is still a nice looking car, but a little too loud. It is a taller and wider car than the old 7 Series, but it is too brash for its own good. Next is the Range Rover. Its timeless shape has been carefully modernised and will look at home pulling stranded tractors out of ditches or 
imposing in Kensington, not many other cars have this much car park presence. But the practical all-terrain Range Rover cannot compete with the sexy CL600. With its dynamic, sleek looks, the Mercedes is easily the most beautiful car here. The coupe oozes class out of every single beautiful curve. Now, no matter how good looking a car is, even if you own it, believe it or believe it not, you can't spend all your time looking at it. At some stage, you're going to have to get in and drive it. So, which one of our trio will not only be beautiful on the outside, but also beautiful on the inside? First up, it's the Range Rover. And this chunky exterior is carried over to the interior. The first thing you'll notice when you get in is the amount of room in here. From the boot all the way up to the front, it's absolutely massive. And I really like the leather seats. They just give it that feeling of quality. You know what this car really reminds me of? A 1970s safety concept car. And that's mainly because of the wood grain chip vents on each side and also all the padding all around the car. The center console, well, it's really nicely finished. You've got these buttons here in the middle, which pretty much control everything from the climate control to the very complicated suspension to the gearing. One thing I don't like is the steering wheel. It seems to obscure certain parts of the dash, no matter what height you have it at. So you'll spend most of your time doing things like this, trying to see all the dials, which I would consider to be a complete pain. But the overall feel of this car is of quality and of power. And being so high up, you can pretty much see everything that's going on around you. The interior of the CL600 is a mix of wood and leather. And on the whole, it looks nice. That is except on the steering wheel. But this is a minor niggle and there are enough buttons on the dash to keep you distracted. Plus, there is a nice large sat-nav screen. Despite all this rampant sophistication, Mercedes have made the right decision to retain their excellent analog instruments. The area directly in front of the driver is uncluttered. The seat controls are on the door and instantly fall to hand. However, the lid of the center console requires a contortionist to push it to a 90 degree angle so it doesn't fall down. The engine start stop button on the gear lever, I have to say, is a really nice touch. Compared to the Mercedes, one is amazed by the 760's lack of buttons and switches. And that's because of the iDrive system, a simple wheel that controls all the major controls. The entire cockpit is an elegant blend of wood, leather and plastic. The wood finish in our car is a beautiful rich dark finish and looks far better than the Mercedes. This is not the interior of a motor car, but a very efficient office. When it comes to the scores, it's the Range Rover's interior that disappoints the most. Although it keeps the chunky theme of the outside going, it's just trying too hard to stand out. The Merc comes second, being very sleek, very smooth and very stylish. It is exceptionally well finished with buttons and gadgets everywhere, but it isn't really anything special. Which leaves the BMW grabbing the best interior of the three. The engineers have spent a lot of time in here and have done a very good job. Although the iDrive system is very complicated to use, after time it should become second nature. Now, practicality isn't something that springs to mind with these three cars, but you can't keep posing in them all the time. So, which one of them is going to be able to handle the kids and all the things that comes with them? Well, first up, it's the BMW, and I'm going to start with the back and the boot. It is absolutely massive. Not alone could you fit all the kids' stuff in here, but you can really put the kids in here. No, I'm only joking. It's huge, though. It goes all the way in at the back there, and if you put something in here and forgot about it, well, you'll probably find it in 10 years' time. It's also got these unbelievably sturdy hinges, and if you're the lazy type, well, you can open and close it just like that. It's a great little toy. There you go. In the back, well, space and comfort is very important, and you have both. Even with the front seat all the way back, I have loads of legroom, and don't forget, I'm over six foot tall. In the front, ah, there's also a lot of space and a lot of comfort. And I love the seats, they're so comfy. There is though, however, a measly sized glove box, but that's more than compensated with this center unit. It opens like so, and there's plenty of room in there for all your bits and pieces. There's also a switch in here to lock the boot. You may say that's a good idea, but think of it this way, you lock it, forget about it. And then you get out of the car to get something out of the boot, and you realize it's locked. You then have to come back in, get into the car, unlock it, get back out again, get whatever else you wanted out of the boot, come back in and get into the car. <sighs> Not such a good idea, is it? No. But then again, I think we forget things easier than the Germans do. Another thing I really like about this car are the wing mirrors. When you put it into reverse, they actually tilt down so you can see the curb as you're reversing. And it also comes with rear sensors as standard. Unfortunately, the two-door CL600's strengths are also its weakness. It is the least practical car here. 
It does have a good size boot and a luggage net, but most of the car's length is rightly dedicated to the monster of an engine it has. The front doors open elegantly and efficiently hinge out of the way. The back seats are easily accessible, but once you are in, it can be a bit cramped. If you are like me and you are a six footer, well, your knees are gonna to touch the front seats and your head will touch the back window. The first aid kit and the elbow rest isn't very comforting either. You can specify a child seat attachment as an option if you so desire. But if you have a junior, and he did spoil your fun in this car, I can tell you, you wouldn't be traveling anywhere but in the boot. As a CL600 is missing most of its B pillars, the C pillars provide very bad blind spots. The rear screen traps raindrops and dirt and can be hard to see when reversing. The standard rear parking sensors, I have to say, are very welcome. Despite all its clever features, both the Merc and the BMW cannot be as practical as the Range Rover. The Range Rover has to be the most practical vehicle here and possibly of all time. Despite its four-wheel drive and 3.5-ton towing capacity, plus not forgetting its awesome off-road ability, there is acres of leg and headroom everywhere. Although it is a very heavy car, things are made to be as light and as maneuverable as possible. Even the spare wheel has a lifting assister for those of us who are not built like Arnie. Well, that's three of the five tests out of the way. And later on in the program, I'll be seeing which one offers the best value for money. And most importantly, which one is the best to drive. But right now, as always, Brendan Coogan is here with his unique alternative. So what if money is no object? What do you buy? Well, you've got your mansion and your yacht, so now you need a car. Perhaps you buy a Range Rover or a Porsche or a BMW. Or maybe you could forget the usual footballer's cars and go for something that's not only a lot more exclusive, but a whole lot more expensive. Costing the best part of £250,000, this Maybach is quite possibly the most exclusive and luxurious car in the world. Resurrecting a brand that had long been forgotten, Mercedes-Benz have created a car that only the elite can afford. As you would expect, standard equipment is more than generous, with reclining rear seats, TV, DVD screens with surround sound, a fridge and even clamps to keep your champagne steady. But as impressive as this all is, if you're spending the best part of a quarter of a million pounds, you want your car to stand out from the crowd, although what crowd you wouldn't stand out from in this is anyone's guess. Once you've handed over the account number of your trust fund, you can pop along to your local friendly dealer, sit down and wade through the seemingly endless optional specification list. In fact, there are over two million ways of equipping the car with customer-made luggage and champagne goblets, just a couple of options. And of course, in order to fully enjoy your in-car entertainment, you're going to need plenty of space. And once again, the Maybach doesn't disappoint. You enter the car through the huge doors that swing open to almost 90 degrees and once inside you can pretty much do what you want as there's enough room for an after show party or board meeting. But if you do get a few unexpected guests, don't worry because you can buy an even longer model than the standard 5.7 metre car. Underneath the car's sculpted and seemingly endless bonnet is a 5.5 litre twin turbocharged V12 engine which despite the car's huge proportions and bulk can get the car to 60 in a mind-boggling 5.2 seconds. But despite all this power, you don't buy a car like the Maybach for fun. No, you buy it so you can arrive fresh and relaxed for the latest Hollywood film premiere. Underpinning the car is a set of air springs, which when combined with the car's adaptive dampers, help to ensure that even the bumpiest of roads will go unnoticed as you waft along in your Napa leather recliner. Now, no other car comes close to matching the sheer luxury and exclusivity of the Maybach. So, if you do have loads of money, then maybe it's the car for you. But if you don't, and you're just a regular Manchester guy like me, then perhaps you'll have to make do with a simple S-Class Mercedes. Thanks very much indeed, Brendan. And of course, he will be back next week yet again with another alternative. Well, that's nearly it for part one of Carfile, but make sure you join me after the break when you know what happens. Oh, yes, you do. I get to drive the cars. Oh, and of course, we'll be giving you the winner as well. But I get to drive the cars. See you in a minute. How are you doing? You're welcome back to Carfile. Now, this week, we have three cars that will not only get your pulse racing because of their good looks, but also because they're worth in excess of £60,000. Now, so far, I have tested the BMW 760i, the Mercedes CL600, and the Range Rover Vogue V8 for practicality and styling. And later on, I'll be seeing which one of them offers the best value for money. 
But right now, how would you like to drive one of these cars? Well, you can't, because that's my job. Oh, the fun of it all. And there's no question as to which one I'm going to start with. It is, of course, the Merc, and I don't even need a key, because I have this. Oh, the wonders of technology. And when you get into this car, wow, <laughs> it's quite incredible. It's wonderful to be inside of. And even on paper, the statistics look absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, I've said it's got a six-liter engine, but it's also twin-turbo, a V12 as well. That's incredible. It makes me feel funny inside when I say that. Now, compared to the OCL, well, that got you to 60 in six seconds. Well, if you took half a second off that, you'd only be a third of the way there because this will get you to 60 miles an hour in a whopping 4.5 seconds. <laughs> I've said before about other cars that I've driven that I've been impressed with the acceleration, but this, this is unbelievable. It really throws you back into the seat. You don't sick bank into it. You get thrown into the seat when you put your foot down and you accelerate. It's so much fun. All I can say is thank God for the active suspension, the electronic stability, the ABS, the traction control, and any other little device that's in this car to stop you lamping it into a ditch or a lamppost or whatever else you can put this into because it is a very powerful car and if you don't know how to handle a powerful car, well I can tell you one thing, you'll find you won't have a powerful car for very long. Okay, so the 7 Series might look like an experiment gone wrong, but once you're behind the wheel you remember what BMW are so good at, making driver's cars. The 760 six-speed automatic transmission works extremely efficiently with this superb engine. The manual controls and the steering wheel work in harmony and although 155 miles per hour is electronically as fast as you will go and 0 to 60 appears in around 5.5 seconds, you will never notice. And apart from a little road noise, it is all a bit too refined. Having said that though, the car is very agile for its size and thanks to the traction control, even the quickest of drivers should find the 7 Series very capable. The steering is light and direct and makes driving slow or fast just as enjoyable. But then again, is the 7 Series really for throwing around or is it a car built to cruise? Getting into the Range Rover after driving the Merc, well, it's a completely different world. I don't think it's fair to compare the two because they are completely different animals. The Range Rover is nearly twice as high off the ground as the Merc. You can pretty much see everything that's going on around here. If you're into that sort of thing, you will really like driving this car. You have to see over nearly every other vehicle on the road, bar, trucks. This will get you to 60 miles an hour in 9.2 seconds. It's not fast, I know, but put it into perspective. This machine weighs two and a half tons. It'll get you to its top speed of 130 miles an hour. The one thing I have noticed in and around town is the 4.4 liter engine, it works very hard. It's a great engine, but you can really feel that extra weight. So you're not gonna be left back in your seat when you put your foot in the accelerator in this car. For pure drivability, the Range Rover can't match either the excitement of the Merc or the refinement of the BMW. If however you want a supreme off-roader that will look great on the high street, then the Vogue is for you. The 7 Series is excellent. It is quieter and faster than the Range Rover and it has a well-deserved second place. But it is a little too efficient. It does its job a bit too well. It just isn't enough fun. And that is where the Mercedes wins hands down. It is fantastic. Powerful, sleek, comfortable, and just great fun. If I could, I would drive this car until the oil fields ran dry. Now, at this stage in the show, the BMW and the Range Rover are side by side, while the Merc is just out in front. But now I see a problem for this car, because it's time for the value for money category. This Mercedes CL600 will set you back £96,000. Yes, you heard me right. £96,000. Just think of all the Cicentos you could buy for that. Actually, no, don't. That's a really bad idea. Now, although Mercedes do hold their money quite well, I will tell you, I think it's going to find it very difficult to win the value for money stakes. And that means that these two are head to head or kissing, whichever you prefer. Now, the Range Rover, this is going to set you back £60 thousand pounds whereas the BMW will set you back 76,000 pounds and seeing as it's so close between these two I've decided to make a list of what they both offer on top of of course what you get with standard kit like electric windows and power steering so let us start with the Range Rover 
you get adjustable air suspension and four-wheel drive. The BMW gives you rear-wheel drive. You get by Xenon headlights. You get a more sophisticated control system in the BMW. The Range Rover gives you fold-in mirrors. You get a BMW phone in the BMW. Front and rear heated seats and heated steering wheel. Electric rear seats. Sunroof is standard. Satellite, ah, you get the general idea. They both have a huge amount of kit. It's kind of up to you which one you prefer. So that means all the scores are in. All we have to do now is give you the final result. Oh, thank God for that. The BMW comes third. It is the least attractive car here, but it has a fantastic interior and is an excellent all-round car. For a luxury mile muncher, you can't go far wrong. The Range Rover only just beats the BMW simply because of its advanced off-road ability. It is smart, stylish and very well equipped. The Mercedes just pips the Range Rover because of its awesome drivability. It is a beautiful car inside and out. It is a car for the enthusiast because not many people will know how powerful and how expensive it really is. You could argue that its price sets it apart from the BMW and the Range Rover, but it is also an indication of how good the other cars are. Well, unfortunately, that's it for another car file. And in fact, for this series. But don't worry because we'll be back later in the year to find out if any of the new kids on the block can topple the current Carfile Kings. We'll see you then.